the way I want you to view food from this day forward is as a nutrition source, number one, and number two, as a fuel source. And so I'm going to be talking about eating right. That's the focus of my presentation. Um, I also like talking about detoxifying, minimizing stress, exercising, and supplementation. And although most Americans, 40% of Americans are overweight, the majority of us are actually malnourished. And so just some background information, you know, I use this information all the time in anesthesia because it helps me determine how drugs work and how there's different drug interactions and um, the fluid volume of a patient and how much I have to resuscitate a patient. Um, so it's important to understand this even on a nutritional basis, right? So 50 to 60 percent of our body composition, depending if you're male or female, how lean you are, is about 60% water, and the rest consists of fat, 25% uh, fat, 15% proteins, 4% minerals, and only 1% carbohydrates. So we're mostly, we're mostly, excuse me, made out of water, healthy fats, proteins, and minerals. And even fetuses, people, you know, neonates are eight, up to 80% water. And so our brains are mainly composed of 77% water and our skeletal muscle is also mainly composed of water. And our brain is just 1% carbohydrates. And as physicians, we know that you can survive for a long period of time without, low, uh, without carbohydrate, uh, carbohydrates. Um, so eating right, what diet should you follow? And there's so much information out there and I, I feel like I, I get confused all the time on what diet I should follow and so I'm gonna try to break down some of the myths and stereotypes uh, behind this question and so let's talk about proteins fats and carbohydrates so first off I think 10 20 years ago fats were looked at as you know the evil macronutrient if you will and so there's good fats and there's bad fats so some good fats you know Always think about moderation or egg, yolk, egg yolks, grass-fed butter, ghee, uh, coconut milk, um, milk from grass-fed animals, avocados, olives, and, and nuts. Um, and this is because a lot of these foods contain omega-3s. And these omega-3s help combat some of the omega-6s that are found in, um, in a lot of protein sources, a lot of meat sources. And so you want a good balance because if you have too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3, then you're going to have too much oxidation going on, which can lead to inflammation, which can exacerbate comorbidities such as um, diabetes and autoimmune disease and things like that. And so we can talk about some bad oils. I touched on omega-6s and trans fats. We see this all the time in, you know, box crackers and box cookies. And this is something you want to avoid because these these types of fats are very rigid and so when you look at a cell a cell has to be very fluid it has to allow different uh, electrolytes to pass in and out and it has to maintain a certain concentration gradient when you start making the cell more rigid you limit its ability to um, concentrate you know different ion gradients and you limit a lot of its ability to produce energy that way and so you don't want to consume these trans fats and all these um, processed foods because you're working against yourself yes it might taste good but in the long run you're going to be paying more for your health bill later on and so this is a book that uh, I've read before and it had an excellent chart on here and again anything I tell you or any other health provider tells you you should always do your own research always do your own research and discover, hey, does this work for me? Does this diet work for me? Is this something I can institute on a daily basis and keep this up long term? And so, for instance, I have a column here that says you should eat these certain fats and avoid these certain fats. And the way it works is a lot of, a lot of oils, a lot of cooking oils like canola oil, um, mazola oil, these, thing, these types of oils are just flooded with uh, GMO, uh, G GMO products and you really don't want to consume that because these products are filled with pesticides and when you cook them, when you cook these oils and use them for cooking, they have a low smoke point so, they, so the fats get oxidized very easily and can cause free radicals and cause a lot of harm if you consume these on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So I'll tell you about some cooking oils that you should probably start cooking with and which ones you should avoid. Now before we do that, let's talk about protein. And in my opinion, we eat too much protein. Now, uh, the Prophet وسلم, he ate protein all the time. Uh, and there were times when he didn't eat protein for two, three months and all he lived off of was dates and milk. I do think we should eat meat. Now the problem is, is we eat low quality meat. That's the biggest problem. The majority of the beef we eat is not grass fed, it's not grass finished. And why is this bad? This is bad because when cows are fed corn that's sprayed with pesticide and then they eat that corn and then they start developing you know these cows are a lot bigger they have hormone imbalances and we all know that part of the reason why we eat halal food as muslims is because we want to keep the hormones in homeostasis right now if these cows are eating uh, this corn that's sprayed with pesticide all day then they're not going to be able to uh, have hormone homeostasis and that's going to have a ripple effect on the people who consume it and same thing with chickens if chickens aren't roaming around eating what they usually eat from you know the grass from the ground and if they're stuck in a cage and they have they live in pro close proximity to the other chickens then they're not going to have uh, a high nutritional profile either and same thing with most farm raised uh, fish and shrimp again it's the same concept they're fed low quality food that eventually causes a ripple effect on the people who consume it like us and so if uh, when you do eat meat you should try to eat high quality meat and the my main issue with this though is it's expensive to do that when you try to buy grass-fed grass finished beef it's a little more expensive and same thing with pasture raised chicken and wild caught fish or shrimp however I do think you should invest in your health and making some sacrifices uh, in that regard are going to pay dividends later on in your health and so for example some of the best fish to eat are small fish because smaller fish contain less mercury and uh, so for instance salmon sardines herring and mackerel and those are very and those are some of my favorites because they're very rich in omega-3s and those omega-3s are more bioavailable than some of the omega-3s that you'll find in, um, in other uh, plant-based foods such as flax seeds for instance and so just just to sum it up, the smaller the fish, the better. And wild caught fish are superior to farm raised fish. And so, you know, one myth is, oh, I eat tuna and it's great. Well, most canned tuna is not great for you because, again, these fish are a little bit bigger and they have a higher mercury content. There is some fish, there, there is some tuna out there that is caught in a sustainable way where they do have less mercury and less, um, less preservatives in the can. And so, my overall um, advice to you is limit the bigger fish consumption so tuna halibut sea bass etc and so again here's another summary table here and so of course try your best to eat grass-fed beef and lamb and pasture-raised eggs and lamb overall is mainly grass-fed and so you don't really have to worry about lamb as much but when it comes to beef beef is you know, even though it's USDA approved, it's not grass-fed beef. And so you want to look for that on the label when you're out shopping. Now, foods to avoid. This is very obvious, sugar. Now, sugar causes insulin resistance, and that's going to cause a myriad of effects in your body. It's going to cause uh, increased fat storage around your organs, and it's going to increase visceral fat. And that's that stubborn belly fat that most people can't get rid of, right? And it's even been linked to infertility because, you know, there's a lot of conditions, even in the uh, obstetric world, where it's literally just insulin it's due to insulin resistance and sometimes this can lead to infertility hormone imbalance um, and mess up the hormones if you're a male or female and they also promote oxidative stress again and this is going to cause ripple effects and it's gonna you know make you more lethargic and tired and if you have these constant swings of blood sugar throughout the day where you go high and then low high and low you're gonna feel that you're gonna feel more hungry throughout the day you're gonna feel more tired after you eat and so sugar you know sugar it, and it has you know other effects you know people a lot of people that I see in the hospital who get affected by COVID-19 the most have high blood 
high blood pressure and diabetes. And it's because diabetes overall causes an inflammatory response in your body. And you don't want to have that. You want to, you want to create a clean environment for your cells to grow and uh, to grow. And the problem is sugar is going to impede that. And so, uh, you know, fructose is probably the worst type of sugar due to its biochemical interaction. And it's found in fruits naturally, and it's okay to eat fruits. And I'm not saying not to, but you need to watch out for things like high fructose corn syrup. And again, I'm just going to touch on some of these chemical flavor enhancers to avoid, such as aspartame. It has something that mimics glutamate and it causes excessive neuronal firing. And pretty much what this does is it tricks your brain into thinking you're having something sweet and then your brain continues to want something sweet. And I know so many people who are addicted to diet drinks, but they rationalize and say, well, it doesn't have any sugar. You're just consuming more and more preservatives and more of these unhealthy beverages in the long run. So some other foods to avoid or limit are grains. I think grains are okay in moderation, but the problem is, like I said earlier, is a lot of these grains are sprayed with pesticides and they're cut very early. And what do I mean by that? A lot of these grains such as wheat, oats, uh, barley, they're not allowed to sprout, right? So when, when the grains sprout, it gets rid of a lot of the anti-nutrients that's contained in the grain such as gluten and phytic acid. And again, when you spray these grains with uh, pesticides, they start you know, some of them can start growing mold and this can have detrimental effects as well on your GI tract. And so limiting the consumption of grains is also a good idea. And so some grains, you know, that people have on a day to day basis are cereals. Um, you know, a lot of people have that in the morning. And so that's something you should probably start limiting. Now, uh, cereals and breads are probably the main types of grains. And so if you still wish to eat wheat on occasion i think that's okay just as long as you eat sprouted wheat because sprouted wheat is going to get rid of some of those anti-nutrients or limit the amount of the anti-nutrients that you're going to be exposed to and so if you still want to eat wheat i think it's okay but just eat sprouted wheat uh, to limit those anti-nutrients and again here's another type of uh diagram i laid out here so you know some of the best grains and starch you can eat are sweet potatoes, yams, butternut squash. You know, white rice is actually not as bad as people say it is, as long as it's non-GMO. Um, it's not as bad. To me, I would prefer someone to eat white rice in moderation, of course. That doesn't mean go and have, you know, 10 pounds of white rice. But having it in moderation, you know, is going to be better than even organic corn and organic wheat. And there's a big misconception on oh is organic better well it depends you know is that organic wheat sprouted or not you know you want some when it comes to wheat again you want it to be sprouted some other foods to avoid I think we hear this term all the time avoid processed foods but what the heck are processed foods so I took the, I want to take the time to actually define what processed foods are so processed foods they have to be mass produced, number one. They have to have a long shelf life or freezer life. They have to be consistent batch to batch and virtually all of the nutrients are pre-frozen and that's gonna remove a lot of the fiber which helps with the nutrient absorption. They, you, they contain um, emulsifiers to help them you know, stay preserved over time and it has to be consistent country to country. And so one example is, for instance, you know, candy bars, right? They're pretty consistent country to country. Honestly, I think Snickers bars taste better in Lebanon, where I'm originally from, than they do here. But it's pretty consistent in Lebanon and here, and it lasts just as long. And so that's what processed foods are, right? And I think we hear this term all the time, but I wanted to finally define it for you guys. When you have all of these bullet points and you have all of them uh, listed out, that's what defines processed foods. Now dairy. I used to drink a lot of milk when I was younger and you know as physicians we know that overconsumption of milk in, ch in children and infants can lead to iron anemia and, um, and other issues. Now 
And when it comes to milk, just limit your intake because again, a lot of these cows are fed GMO grains, GMO corn that are sprayed with pesticides. And a lot of them aren't eating grass. They're not grazing it. They're not, you know, walking around the fields eating grass and th something that was very common 150 years ago, 40 years ago. If you can't give up cow's milk, then have grass-fed milk, uh, ideally organic grass-fed milk. And it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but the, the content of omega inflammatory omega-6s is going to be less, and you're going to have a little bit more omega-3s to balance out the omega-6s. And again, this is something um, you know I saw in, in one of my favorite books that I've read. And so uh, some things that you should eat are organic grass-fed butter or ghee, um, even grass-fed butter or ghee that's non-organic is great. Um, some things that you should avoid are, you know, skim milk, low-fat milk. I mean, believe it or not, these are all deemed healthy, but when you look at the ingredient label in the back, you see a ton of sugar added, you see a lot of preservatives added, and so these things are not good for us in the long run, and again, it's going to cause an imbalance in our glucose and our insulin. And I think there's a common misconception too that organic is better and I used to like fall for this trap all the time but when it comes to fruits and vegetables every year um, there's a list called the dirty dozen and the clean 15 and so for the dirty dozen you want to buy these 12 fruits and vegetables um, you want to buy them organic because these are heavily sprayed with pesticides um, and so you don't you I mean you don't want to buy these non-organic, right? So you want to buy them organic, it's going to limit the amount of pesticides. And it's funny because a lot of the pesticides that are banned in Europe, literally banned, are still used here in the United States. And so when you buy something organic, it just means you, we didn't spray the banned uh, pesticide in Europe. And so take, take that for what you will. Now, clean 15 fruits and vegetables, these you don't have to you don't have to buy um, organic and so avocados have a thick shell right so that protects them from the pesticides same with pineapples onions um, and a lot and a lot of other uh, fruits and veggies I've listed on here so you know I wanted to just get into detoxifying so this words overused a lot of people try to sell, sell you these kits that help you detoxify the best way to detoxify is honestly by yourself and by taking some of the advice I've given you earlier. And again, do your own research. Um, and examples of toxins are, you know, household poisons, you know, being exposed to a lot of heavy metals. You know, when you're overcooking things and it turns black, you know, when you're grilling something, you know, that could be considered um, an example of a toxin. Radiation, you know, sometimes you have to weigh the risks and benefits as a physician, right? And antibiotics, when they're used too much, right like just because you have a cold sometimes you may not need the antibiotic and sometimes patients get upset with physicians when they don't give them the antibiotics but we use these antibiotics sparingly with caution because it causes resistance and that eventually leads to infections that are difficult to control so some things to avoid of course are eliminating sweet drinks so soda fruit juices um, again uh, these MRP reactions occur when you're overcooking certain foods or cook or frying certain foods um, and it's going to oxidize that food and create a lot of free radicals and avoiding farmed fish always try to get wild caught fish um, and that's going to have higher omega-3 content and it's going to get rid of some of the poor feed that the fish uh, consume when they when they're farm raised Avoid these cooking oils, so canola, corn, cottonseed, peanut, safflower, safflower, soybean, and vegetable oils. Again, they have a lot of GMOs and they can be easily oxidized. Um, overall, corn is not the best thing to, consu uh, to consume. It, it's used for high fructose corn syrup, for instance, and that, you know, that's going to spike your blood sugar as well. And it's very heavily sprayed with uh, GMOs as well. It's very heavily sprayed with pesticides and you know it's a very common GMO crop, excuse me. Now some things that I, I think everyone should institute is just drinking clean water and what I mean by that is clean mineral water and if you're going to use a filtration device use reverse osmo osmosis water purification or carbon uh, filters 
and uh, a lot of those a lot of those dispensaries they have at, um, at HEB or your grocery store for instance will have reverse osmosis and this is going to get rid of a lot of the um, toxins and the um, heavy metals that might be in uh, some water sources and you know just ask your doctor but you can even add some sea salt in a large glass of water after you wake up in the morning and so sea salt is different than table salt right table salt is not 100 percent salt sea salt is different right and that's that's more it's healthier for you and uh, has other minerals in it too such as magnesium and things like that that are healthier for you which many of us are low in magnesium again always read your ingredients if you don't understand an ingredient then take the time to research it and look it up and again so cook with coconut oil grass-fed butter or avocado oil they have a higher smoke point and they're also not saturated and so they don't oxidize as easily um, and just like as a side note when it comes to drinking coffee the conventional coffees coffee beans are sprayed with pesticides and so you want to try your best to buy organic coffee and try to buy it from like one source so it'll say like this coffee is from Colombia uh, Peru and Mexico try to buy it from like one source because that's less people messing around with your coffee beans and so again too much caffeine can create electrolyte disturbances and hormone imbalances uh, if you if you rely on your coffee every single morning to get up and do something you're just going to increase your cortisol throughout uh, throughout the day and throughout your week and your months so you should always take a break let your body detoxify let your body rebalance itself um, and so Ramadan is great for that I mean I will drink coffee maybe like once in a while once a week maybe once every couple weeks but I do like to drink green tea um, it has less caffeine content and it also has L-theanine which works to balance some of the jitters you get from caffeine again some other things so you know I think this is a great slide so avoid GMO foods anytime you see a four digit number on produce this means it's conventionally grown has synthetic fertilizers something I touched on earlier and pesticides uh, but it doesn't mean that the product is GMO now five digit number that means and if it begins with eight it means the product is GMO and if it's a five digit number and begins with the nine it's an organic product and has it been exposed to any of the above that I've listed alright guys so if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up please like comment and subscribe more videos to come and I'll see you guys in the next video.